Well, he's, the Bible talks about the laborer being worthy of his hire. And so I'm not going to tell you what we ought to give this week. We're going to trust the Lord to lay it on our hearts, and then we're going to commit to being faithful to give what he does. But consider what his expenses might be, remembering he hasn't, he's told us, hey, there are no expenses. I'll come for free. But he has to pay his bills whether he comes for free or not. And so there are just a minimum. Uh, he put in his uh, revival brochure a minimum amount of what it would just cost him for travel expenses. And I just, I looked at that and I thought that wouldn't nearly cover what it would cost for him just to get here. And so as you give this evening and as you pray, please understand this. I'm not asking you to give any amount. I'm asking you to ask God what he would have you to give and to pray about it this week. And one of the suggestions that I would uh, mention would be consider not just giving one time or one night. Consider praying every single day this week and asking the Lord to give what he wants you to. In my experience, if you'll do that, God always meets the needs of his people and does so wonderfully. And uh, Dr. Coyle could give wonderful testimonies of God's provision for him and for his family. But he's not asking us about this this week. This is our duty, our responsibility. And we're going to take care of God's man. That is our job. And so we're going to pray at this time. And I'm going to ask Brother Alex to come. And we're going to take up our offering this evening. Consider not just giving tonight, but consider praying about it throughout the week and giving as the Lord has laid on your heart. Heavenly Father, we recognize tonight the truth that without Jesus Christ we are nothing and we have nothing. Lord, I realize that the important matter tonight is not dollars. The important matter is whether or not what we do pleases you. So it would be my prayer that you would help us with this by laying on our hearts specifically what it is that we ought to give. And God, as we give tonight, help us to understand in our minds that this is not a matter of our ability, this is a matter of our obedience, and that if you've laid something on our hearts as a steward, it's the right thing for us to give what you want us to. And then help us to be reminded tonight that it is you that gives us the grace to be able to be faithful in this matter. And Lord, we would just pray as this is part of our service tonight that you would use this even now to prepare our hearts for the preaching of your word. And as we give in this offering that we would see it more than simply putting money or allocating resources in a plate, but we would see this matter as worship. And I ask that you would help us tonight as we worship you and give us the leading that we need in order to be obedient. And as we do so, Father, it's our prayer that you would receive it and be pleased by it. And it would be to your glory we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing them. Sing them to the Lord. When I saw the cleansing fountain open wide for all my sin, I obeyed the Spirit's wooing when he said, Wilt thou be clean? I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Though the way seems straight and narrow, all I claimed was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood and wash away each day. On the fourth, blessed be the name of Jesus, I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions, he has cleansed my heart from sin. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Glory, glory to the Father, 
Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the three in one. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good evening. Take your Bible tonight, if you would, and turn to the book of 1 John. We'll look at 1 John. We'll be in chapter number 1 initially, but uh, when you get to chapter 1, turn over to chapter 3, because we're going to look at something there in chapter 3 in just a moment. 1 John chapter number 1, and let me say thank you for coming out tonight. It's good to see uh, the McClure family, Pastor McClure, and uh, his better half is over yonder. And uh, good to see them as well, and good to see you, brother. Thank you for coming out to the service tonight. I sure appreciate that. All of you, thank you for the effort that you've given. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we'll have services, 7 o'clock, prayer service at 6.30. You're invited to come to that. We uh, were able to pray together this evening, and uh, want you to know that you're invited as well to come. And if you invited a visitor, make sure that you let Pastor know. He's our official accumulator. He's... Uh, the running total he's got somewhere written down, top secret, and um, up in his brain there. So a little suspect, but nonetheless, we'll trust him with it there. And uh, what you're eligible for if you win is a free um, week, weekend, depends on what you choose, to the Bill Rice Ranch, whether it's a family camp, whether it's a junior week, whether it's a teen week, whether it's a men's conference, a ladies' conference, a couples' conference, depends on what you uh, are interested in. And uh, it really is worth your while. You have to bring at least 10 visitors to be eligible for that. And remember, a visitor is somebody who has not yet attended the revival services, okay? So if they were not here yesterday and they were not here today, you could invite them and they could be your visitor and make sure you get them before they come on the premises here, okay? And uh, that'll be important. Put a little effort into it. Here is a book that is on the table I want to highlight for you. It's entitled, When a Christian Sins, written by Dr. John R. Rice. Um, notice it's not if a Christian sins. It's when a Christian sins. Uh, we don't believe the Bible teaches sinless perfection this side of eternity. You're going to struggle with the flesh and that old man. And uh, there are great consequences to sin in our life. There are six chapters in the book. I'll give you some of the titles, okay? Uh, number one, all Christians do sin. It's going to happen. It's not a license to sin. Romans 6 talks about that, but it's going to be something that you will struggle with. Uh, chapter 2, only God's grace can keep such frail Christians saved. Um, you know, many times when a person gets involved in sin, all sorts of thoughts can come to your mind. Boy, this is it. It's all over now. The Lord's kicked me out. I'm done with, and God doesn't want to have anything to do with me. Well, John Rice says only God's grace can keep such frail Christians saved. The point he's making is this. You are kept saved the very way you were saved by God's grace. You didn't deserve it, and I'll tell you 20 years down the road, you still aren't going to deserve it. It's the grace of God. Just a wonderful thing. We talked about that last night. Uh, what sin does to the Christian, it's never good. Probably, I could say, the, the, the deepest, most complex, difficult Troubles and trials you've had in your life have been because of sin. Something you've done, a decision you made, an act you committed, a thought that you entertained, whatever it might be. Uh, what sin does to the Christian is never good. Um, you know, chapter 4 is an interesting title. The Christian's happiness in heaven depends on how he lived on earth. Hmm. Interesting. You say, do you agree with that? I didn't write the book. Nonetheless, it's in there. And uh, very seldom was John Rice wrong. And... Whatever he has to say about that, I am sure he'll give good Bible reason for his position. Uh, food for thought. The way to forgiveness and cleansing in chapter 6, living a life of victory over sin. Sign me up. I'm interested in that. So it's just an interesting booklet, and it's over there on the table, and I'll hand this to my ostentatious assistant here, uh, Michaela. Thank you. You just set it down there beside you, sweetheart. Um, 1 John chapter number 3, we're going to look at chapter 1 in great detail in just a moment. Here's what we're going to do, and um, 
I don't know that very seldom would I do this, and I can think of one other time that I have done it, but the Lord's impressed upon me to do that for this week. I'm going to preach this week through the book of 1 John. We'll only get through chapter 2.